So I just got my Prusa Mark IV uh, delivery and I'm a little worried because listen to this. That doesn't sound good. Ah, uh, well we do have these, that's good. All right, so we've moved what I've, to what I've called the printer room, which is where we have more printers, and put it on here on this cement block so that it can reduce some vibration noise. And I've got it set up. I've got the spool mount on there, as well as the new filament guide, which is gonna help filament not come off of the spool and get wrapped all around here, which happens all the time. Hopefully that's gonna help. Uh, it, I removed the test print, and I'm just getting ready to go through the setup right now. So the good news uh, is what that sound was in the box was the Prusa Mint uh, actually just sliding side back and forth. But what's really cool about the Mark IV is it's actually coming with actual Prusa Mint filament. And that's really cool. I've never actually printed with Prusa Mint PLA before, only Pet, Pet G. And so this is gonna be uh, really cool for me. But it also comes with, of course, your isopropyl al alcohol and a little nozzle uh, cleaner. It's like the acupuncture pin there printing handbook, there are a little checklist to make sure everything's good. A couple tools here. I wish they would include flush cutters because I like flush cutters, but um, Allen wrenches and screwdrivers. Um, here are a couple of new tools though uh, for the Mark IV. I don't know what these are, but they sure look like that looks like it could hold a hot end and that looks like it could turn a nozzle. So we'll have to see if that's what that's for. And here is the original test print that came on the bed for the assembled printer. Here is, of course, some lube for those uh, those access rods. I never figured out how the heck I'm supposed to use this orange thing, though. And, of course, oh, yeah. Okay, so back on the setup, it did a test of the fans, which are actually different on the Mark IV. There's the uh, heat break fan, basically, to make sure that that stays cool. And then here's the print fan over on the side. And actually, the fan shroud is over here. And if it would focus, that's really different. But it's going to do a test of the load cell, which is basically that sensor it has on the nozzle to test how hard it's hitting the bed, I guess. And so we're going to run through this and see how that does. That is, of course, for the bed leveling. Okay, I totally wasn't prepared because it said tap the nozzle. You're supposed to tap it with your hand to test the load cell. Okay, we're going to try this again. So I'm going to hit uh, continue. Okay, and then I'm going to tap it. And I didn't, I tapped it too soon. Okay, do this again. Tap it in five, four, three, two, one. Tap. <laughs> it passed, okay. Weird. Okay, and now it's doing the x-axis calibration. One thing I'm noticing is these motors are a lot quieter. That's way quieter. And it seemed like the z-axis moved a lot faster than it did on the Mark III. And it's just going to run through these tests and uh, make sure that the XYZ axes, axes are all good. Now it's going down to touch the heat bed for the first time. I'm going to say that this is going to be nice because hopefully I won't have to put that piece of paper on. I really hate doing that part of the Z calibration on the Mark III. Let's see. Hmm. So I'm chewing through some... Uh, some, you know, Haribo's right now. But if you're not familiar with that uh, paper test, basically to make sure that your Z-axis is good, you have to put a piece of paper down, not a paper towel, like an actual piece of paper. Then the nozzle comes down and kind of just hovers around here and goes like this a bunch, and it comes lower and lower and lower. Basically, if it moves the piece of paper, that means it's wrong and you have to, like, fix something. Usually it's something wrong with this pinda. Maybe it's too low, too high so that it can do each corner and not move the paper. But it's really annoying because it takes like 12 minutes and you have to watch it because you gotta cut the power if it moves the paper. So I'm glad, I'm, I'm hoping actually, I don't know yet, but I'm hoping that I don't have to do that with this one. Okay, so it asked me if I had five uh, centimeters of filament to calibrate the filament sensor, I do. And so I hit okay. And now it's going to start without the filament in the extruder. So. I need to unload the filament. Okay, so, oh, and now I'm gonna set the temperature like you did 
on the old one waiting for temperature. That unloading filament process is, looks like it's the same as the Mark 3S where you would come down here and you would say, okay, oh, maybe I should turn it around. All right, you'd say, okay, I wanna unload the filament. So you hit it, you go down to unload filament, you hit okay, and then you tell it what temperature, basically you can tell it which material and the temperature should align with that material. It's always PLA for me. So you heat it up and then when it's heated up, you hit okay and you can pull, it'll, it'll kind of unload it, you can pull it out and it'll beep really loudly. I stepped away for that short second uh, and it just says this, it says, uh, please make sure there's no filament in there. And this is already out and there was no beep and it unloaded it itself, which is actually pretty dang nice. I like that. And I hated the loud beep. Oh. Okay, so it found there was no filament in the sensor and now I need to insert the filament into the extruder till the sensor detects the filament. Obviously this is the same, so stick it in there and there we go. Did you hear that beep from the other one? And it said the filament sensor is successfully calibrated. Cool. Remove filament to finish. All right. And I guess that means we are good and I think we can go ahead and print. Ooh, maybe I can connect Wi-Fi though. How do you get out of this? Just hit it maybe? Yep, happy printing. Cool. All right, so I got the USB stick in and I am going to print the first model. Uh, it is just my, uh, you know, my, my Funko logo or my, oh. So everything's set up and I am going to print my first test, which is a Funko shelf and I'm gonna see how it goes. I think this is gonna be really cool. Oh yeah, I've got to load filament. So we're gonna use Prusament. So loading filament on the Mark IV is really nice now because it's much like the Mini where you can actually load the filament and walk away while it heats up the rest of the way and pulls it through the nozzle uh, without having to like actually be there <laughs> for it to do that. That's actually been super nice with the Mini because sometimes you just you just want to load it and then walk away and do something else while it's heating up and it can finish loading it and then you say, okay, it's loaded, you come back and you're ready to print. And that's what it's doing here. It's going ahead and loading it and purging and then it has a much quieter beep, which is nice. Uh, I don't think the color is correct, so I'm gonna say go ahead and purge more and it's gonna purge more. And that looks right. Okay, now we're good. Yes. Okay. And now it's gonna start the print. Something interesting that I didn't catch is there's apparently a light under here. It's a blue light. I don't know what it's for, but there's a light. Okay, now it is doing the homing uh, at the beginning of the print to see, uh, I guess, I don't know, it's going very slow, but like, I'd expect it to do this. It did a little like rrr, 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 and rrr, 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 before it went down. So um, we're gonna see what this homing and beds, bed leveling actually looks like. For the first time, I'm very excited. This is very much like the bamboo, I think, where it actually touches the bed. Yeah. And the bamboo, I've had a per perfect first layer every single time on both the P1P and the X1C. Um, so I'm just so excited about this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So it's, it, it's, it moved down quickly and then moved down a, really slowly and then uh, is barely moving up to, before it moves the bed. And I hope that's gonna not be a problem on textured sheets. For instance, I've got a matter hacker sheet uh, and it's textured and it's more textured than the, uh, the Prusa one. And hopefully that won't be a problem. Okay, I think that's it, I think. I think it only like measured where it needed to. It didn't measure the measure the whole bed because now it's heating up the hot a hot end all the way to two fifteen, and I think it's going to start the print. Okay, lowering, and that is where the new G code uh, has the uh, purge line right in front of the print, which is also interesting. I'm not sure why. I kind of like it. Where it was, I'll probably move it back. But the other cool thing about this that I noticed is that this print is only gonna take 36 minutes and this is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle 
versus my Mark III's have 0.6 millimeter nozzles, and this print takes 32 minutes on those. So uh, that means that this is pretty fast because it usually took about an hour on the uh, Mark III with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Let's take a closer look at that first layer though. So this is the Prusament Galaxy Black, and I always had trouble with the smooth sheet before because I had to like slam PLA into it for it to get to stick like perfectly. And this looks perfect. It's not too much. It's not too little. It doesn't have those lines that you get when you push it in too hard. Oh my God. It's so nice. I really like that. I also noticed with the Mark IV that there isn't anywhere to set the, the steel sheet settings. So you can't go into settings and then under hardware or hardware setup and add your different steel sheets. And the reason is because it doesn't matter what different steel sheet you have. It's always going to use that sensor, the, the nozzle, I mean, and it's always going to sense where it is. And you don't have to have different settings for different sheets. That's really great for me because I use these sheets quite a bit and then I'll switch over to the smooth sheet or the satin sheet uh, for my TPU prints and I'm not gonna have to switch. And that's gonna prevent issues because if you have the wrong sheet and you start a print, it won't tell you. It'll just not stick right and you'll end up with some serious problems. Also noticing that the screen looks like this when you're printing, when you're mid print. Okay, it's definitely quieter and faster than the Mark III, so the sound is much less like, I don't know, rattly, I guess, than the Mark III, uh, and it's definitely moving faster, but it's not such a bad sound. Here's the new Prusa Mark IV, Prusa Mark IV, and I'm not pronouncing it right, and did you know it has an RGB status bar at the bottom to show you what's going on with your print? and you can go to it in the settings in a user interface and turn that on or off. Isn't that cool? I didn't go through all the accessories because here's the USB drive right here. <laughs> uh, but it's that brand. I don't know, I don't know that brand. Look at that coming in. It's got a green light to say that, hey, it's done. And check it out, a beautiful, beautiful print. Oh, wow and a perfect first layer. Look at that. Wow, overall, I'm super happy, super excited to do with Mark IV. Let me know if you have any questions.